to the ultimate, ultimate question. Well, what is the ultimate question? Isn't it what is the meaning of all? Or why are we here? Well, I suggest it is. I've said it before, but let's go through that answer again. What could possibly be the meaning of all? Because if we can understand the question, the key question, then maybe people will be confident in the answer. Well, the meaning of all, the meaning of why our spirit chooses more than one life and why many of us have lived more than one life is three words. Awareness loves life. Awareness loves life. A L L. And if you want to understand more about that, please go and have a look at eucadia.com and see the journey that will lead you to the understanding of that. Well, it sounds simplistic, doesn't it? Of course it does. It sounds very simplistic. And yet, the answer to that is the answer to existence. It is the answer to why the universe is here. It is answer to how God or the mind of God views the world. Life is everything. Awareness loves life. Awareness doesn't love awareness, it loves life. Okay, well, that may be an answer provided to spirit, but it may not resonate to any of us yet from mind. Remember, mind is the consciousness, the subconscious, the unconscious that was brought us to here. I've given you the first part of the answer, and, and, and some may say, well, well, that's great wordplay, but I don't, I'm not getting the buzz from that. Well, let me explain. Are you awareness or are you life, principally? Yes, of course you're awareness, but are you not life? Well, then you don't, you don't see this answer from the perspective of all, because your experience at the moment, being here in a flesh vessel, listening through the physical auditory abilities that your body provides, sees the answer as la, L-L-A, la. What do we mean by that? Life loves awareness. That is the motive of mind. Mind seeks the answer, the reason, the context. Life experience is, is education and knowledge and relationships and failures and concerns and fears and why we fear and why these people can push us around and why these people can press our buttons. That's la. That's not all. That's la. That's us focusing on is Ellen going to come and destroy us? Are they going to take my home? Are they going to put me in prison? What will happen to my family? How will I feed myself? That's la. Life loves awareness. That's not all. But there is one constant between the mirror of all, all la. And for those, and again, it's a word play, but remember, by the way, if you, if you go back to history, Muhammad created a faith called Sufism. He didn't create Islam. Islam was created by the same crew that run the banks today. The Menashe, the Khazar, the corruptors. But if you put the two together, and this was pointed out to me the other day, all and la, if you want to say it really quickly, says a, an interesting word. All la, or Allah. But moving on, la, life loves awareness, awareness loves life. The constant is the middle term, and the middle term is love. The constant is love. So there in an answer we see a motive for mind, a motive for spirit, a connection and even in fact a possibility that knowledge that was later corrupted and deliberately perverted, the word Sufi by the way comes from Sophia, Sophia in Greek means wisdom, wisdom and all the text that Muhammad by the way apparently wrote was in Greek and the scriptorium that Muhammad had as a Gnostic was bulldozed by the Saudis in the 80s. Bulldozed. The most sacred site of Islam, well, Sufism, 
I mean, not Islam, but Sufism was bulldozed in the 80s. So there's more to learn. There's more la to learn in, in life. But you can never die. You can never die. And if your body dies, it's not the last time that you come. And the only thing they can do is convince you that your mind is smaller, narrower, stupider, to control, to govern the mentis, to govern the mind. And that's exactly what they've been doing for far too long. Well, at the end of a war, one sees the greatest of atrocities. At the end of a war, when one expects logic and reason to prevail and realise that when it's over, there will be trials, there will be people held to account, there will be a reconciliation. Yes, there will be a judgement. That one should bear that in mind. If you're dealing with mental illness... All of that means nothing. In fact, the end is an acceleration of atrocity. So keep that in mind when you think of what you're hearing more and more. I heard today of a woman who has had, this woman, by the way, is 79 years old, 79. This is a woman that had her house completely paid for and had millions of dollars in the bank, a widow. And in a state of rampant corruption, federal agents and state agents stole with the banks that money, stole it, flat stick stole it, and then have stolen her house. And they gave her 15 minutes to leave her home and the only things she had time to take at that moment was a beloved cat and a purse. A 79-year-old woman. Well, at least they didn't kill her. But they've certainly killed many other people as well. They've certainly tased. have no problems putting innocent people in prison. And these are the signs of atrocities at the end. Well, given we are living at a time where judges and lawyers and especially sheriffs and people in law are showing all the characteristics of the prison guards of death camps, cowards to their core, mentally ill to their core, in a state of horrible delusion, one must avoid such madness at all costs. Do not poke the bear in the eye. Do not view magistrate's court as an easy place to start testing your competence. Remember, magistrate's courts are in fact the hardest courts of all. Why? The magistrate is an independent medical um, administrator hearing. The clerk in a magistrate's court is the clerk of guardians and the structure put in place since the 1870s goes straight from the top down. When you go to a magistrate's court, they don't call it a summary judgment for nothing. When you go to a magistrate's court, the judgments have already been made. There is only one source of remedy in a magistrate's court. Well, there's two, in fact. Two sources. Appeal an administrative error, Scrivener's error, a technical error that means they can't proceed on a summary judgment because they missed something in the star chamber. Please do not approach magistrate's court as some simple court where you can argue the toss. If you're going to the magistrate's court for a fine and you can physically pay it, pay it. Don't poke the bear in the eye because, not because we want to sustain the system, but the system is collapsing. And there is no point throwing away your life, your job, your family, unnecessarily. Please, please be sensible. Don't be stupid about it. And that goes for everything at the moment. This has not been frightened. I've spoken now 
for 30 minutes or more about the end of fear once and for all. But that does not mean that we go crazy stupid at a time where there is no law in their system. In other words, what we focus on is learning, training, and testing what has been written. As the canons are being written, they need to be tested. They need to be firm. You need to challenge them to their T and, and tell us that they are strong. Prove that they are strong. Just because I wrote them doesn't mean that they are absolutely fact. I'm researching, I'm learning, I'm praying, I'm testing, I'm listening. If there's an error in anything in the model, it needs to be corrected. But this is what we need to do. Look, I said to someone today, we were talking about the craziness of the banks, the fact that no one in Wall Street responsible for the terrible misery in America has been put in prison yet. Yet. And I said that one of the arguments that Henry Paulson put to the people in Washington was, I know the banks are evil. I know they've done terrible things, potentially criminal things, but they're all we have. And if you take this down, there is nothing to replace it. Nothing. So it's beyond too big to fail. It's flipping it around and looking at the, the crazy logic of what they say. And the crazy logic of what they say is, hey, no one's taken the time to think of an alternative. There is no alternative, therefore you can't get rid of us. There you go. So what should be our effort here? Yes, we need to defend ourselves. We need to help those that don't know how to help themselves. We need to try our best to resist the madness of a system out of control. But we must always consider too that in the absence of an alternative, they're just going to be on a vacation. And that is the purpose of Eucadia. Eucadia is about a complete consumption, complete consumption of the existing system. And that's why there are covenants and charters and canons of law and codes and systems and forms and a financial system, which we're going to talk about in a moment. Why? Because we're replacing the whole system. Please take care of yourself and please don't poke the bear in the eye with a big stick because the bear will swipe you at the moment and it would be better if you spent more time learning and reading and being prepared for when the communities are there, by all means, go armed, go armed with knowledge, I mean by go armed, go armed with knowledge, go with, with people in the community, go when you're ready, but not as an individual, not 100% certain that things will or won't work. Well, moving on. I mentioned Pentecost and I mentioned financial and I talk about some things, issues for me. So let me get to uh, Pentecost and then we'll talk about financial system and then um, the issue of, of where I'm at the moment. I mentioned, and I've said this before, the dead shall rise. I've mentioned this in, importance of whatever we're doing must be done for history, must be done properly, must be done um, with remedy and an opportunity for them to do the right thing, even if they've never done the right thing to us. Pentecost is an extraordinarily important feast. It's the 12th of June this year. It's an incredibly important feast day because what it represents. In their system, it represents a day of illumination, which is why we have called it, effectively, the day of divine illumination. It is the day that the Holy Spirit is supposed to breathe inspiration on the apostles and in their system it is celebrated as one of the most important days as far as their belief system goes. Now, illumination and of course fire, you can make up your own mind what illumination and fire represents in terms of an entity, but this is what they believe. When they set up their Sister KV system and they set up their lawful slavery system as opposed to unlawful slavery, the first person they put into that system was the Pope. They 
created the office of Pope into a trust called Pontifex Romano.